Tonight on Kitchen Nightmares, Gordon goes to New Jersey and somehow ends up in the tropics. But this is no paradise. This part jungle, part restaurant is in deep financial trouble. And what makes matters worse, it is run by a Category 5 store... Girls! Shut your mouth already! ...named Adele, who is not fond of her staff. Isabel, you don't know when to shut up! ...who is disappointed by her chef. You just started. I don't even know how you cook. But the person who drives her nuts... How can you be positive about something you hate? ...is Chef Ramsay. Stop bugging me! I hate him. Hate, hate, hate. Tonight, Gordon Ramsay does his best to turn around this New Jersey eatery. He challenges Adele. Why have you asked me to come here? He confronts an uncooperative daughter. You cannot see a problem. No. But it all might be for nothing. No! Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Because this tropical restaurant might just be impossible to save. Oh my god! Sometimes it's hard to say goodbye to the past. I am devastated right now. White House Station, New Jersey, a quaint village surrounded by rich farmland. It's a popular place for New York commuters to live. Bill and Adele ran successful diners here for decades. We made, with the previous businesses, approximately a million dollars. I said, that's it, I'm retired, I'm done, I'm finished. Hey, Charlie. It was nice. When we retired, by the third day, I was bored. But in 2006, they came out of retirement to open their first fine dining restaurant with their daughter, Cheryl. Chop, chop! We love Florida. We love the tropical atmosphere. So I thought Florida hyphen mangoes. Flamingos. They wanted to be kind of a um, high class restaurant. And it's hideous, hideous beyond belief. This restaurant is very poorly run. We know, we have big problems here. Adele doesn't respect us. Girls, we know! Adele tells him to shut up and she's actually cursed. Shut your mouth already, asshole. Hey. Adele is crazy. Go, fly. All right, here I go. I do the steak, I do the raw bar. I do all the maintenance. It's really hard. I get really upset when I see Bill having to overwork like that. This man should be retired. I think they said medium. Medium rare. Medium rare. The food here is fabulous. You haven't served that time, have you? Yep. I've been a chef of flamingos for about four weeks. The food right now, it's less than mediocre. I definitely wish I could redesign the menu, but they don't want me to change anything. That what do you want me to do? Flamangos is doing lousy, and we don't know why. I can't sleep at night because I think of all the money we spent that would have been our retirement money. Taxes are coming up. Yeah, 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 yeah. I see us out in the street almost. If this goes belly up, I could lose everything. How am I going to start over? I can't think of anyone else that could help us, but Gordon Ramsay. I mean, he cuts right through the shit, and we are in deep shit. White House Station, New Jersey. Not exactly the New Jersey I know. Look at this place. I'm here to visit a restaurant called Flamingos. It's a long time before lunch, so I'm going to visit the family at home rather than go straight to the restaurant. Oh, the smell of manure is strong. Wow. That was a road and a half. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. 
Chef Ramsay. Uh, Gordon, please. Good I'm to see good. you. Bill. Yes? Bill, yes. Good to meet you, sir. How old are you? I am 70. You look great for 70. You know that. Thank you. Huh? And you're setting this up for a few years' time for retirement or what? Well, I'm supposed to be retired now, but I bought a restaurant instead. <laughs> and now I'm broke. <laughs> You honestly came out? I came retirement out of retirement. To open a restaurant? To open a restaurant. Oh, I had restaurants before. I had about four of them before. Uh -huh. And I made a lot of money with them. But this one is, I don't know what's the matter with it. I need Chef Ramsay's help to try to make this a successful restaurant for Cheryl and Adele. I'd like you to meet Chef Ramsay. How are you? Hello. Gordon, oh, nice to so see you, my darling. Oh, the big question for me is, you had a restaurant. Yes. Yeah, we started Restaurants. diners. So then you sell them, you go into retirement. Right. Mm -hmm. Why would you come out of retirement to buy another restaurant? We wanted to do this as a family. Yeah. My daughter, Cheryl, and myself. Would you like to meet Cheryl? Please. Cheryl! Hello. Yeah. Good to meet you. Good to Likewise, meet you as well. Is... Now, do you just pop over for a slice of cake? No, I live here. <laughs> you live here? <laughs> yes. I'm 42 years old. Same age as me. I left mum 24 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> what are you still doing here? I haven't had a paycheck in two years. Right. I have to live home. My daughter, Cheryl, she's still living with us. But she doesn't bring anyone home. No guys. Forget that. OK. Should we get to the restaurant? Sure. Let me drive you there. Let's go on a little scenic route, yeah? All right. Yeah? yeah. Oh, <laughs> Let's go, princess. OK. So tell me, who came up with the word flamingos? No, it's flamingos. Flamingos. Who? Flamingos. 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 It's flamingos. Not flamingos. Flamingos. FLA. FLA slash mangoes. Not flamingos. Not flamingos. Flamingos. Yeah, flamingos. Right. Restaurant in New Jersey. Yeah, why not? Are you fucking crazy? There you are. Thank you so much for the lift. Wow, Florida mango. <laughs> Jesus. Wow, wow. Wow, 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 wow. Oh my god. It's like a zoo in here. Yeah, well, it is tropical. Who designed it? My daughter decorated it. Amazing. How drunk was she when she put the final sketches together? We do like the tropics. I don't see anything wrong in bringing tropical to White House Station. This is Jody. She's Jody. going to take care of you. OK, brilliant. OK. Thank you, Adele. Where do you start this one? It's endless. OK, um, let's start off with Ai tuna okay. on the flaming tiki platter. Tiki. And then I'll end up with that tsunami on filet mignon. OK. Thank you. OK, it's for Chef Ramsay. All right. I think Chef Ramsay's mouth's going to drop to the floor when he sees a few of the things on the menu. Our tuna appetizer. Thank you. Enjoy. Is that always that hot in terms of spicing? They have a tendency to spice things up a bit. It's an embarrassment to tuna. Yes. Ask Cheryl to taste that other little end there. I will. Thank you, my darling. Brian, Cheryl, Chef Ramsay would like you guys to taste the tuna. It is really spicy. I've been saying it since I got here. I never had a problem. Doesn't matter if you love it or not. Everybody else, four times I've got complaints about being spicy. So he's, he's done with it. Ribs are destroyed. Sunday we made those. It's a week. Four days. Whatever, send it. Just send it out, send it out. Wow. I see platters like that. I hear Hawaiian music. Oh, my God. So do we use that and start grilling um, away? Or... It, it's for looks. Thank you. Mm. Oh, fuck me. What the fuck? Are you trying to get the smoke detectors to come? No, I'm trying to get the thing off the top. Excuse me. Having a world-known chef spit out my food is not good. Tiki plata. Shitty plata. We need Bill ready to carve a play. Tell my father to put his, his black chef coat on. Cheryl wants you to put your black chef coat on. Next, Philly Mignon. So I'm sort of looking forward to a really nice, classic piece of meat. Show you where it is. Strip down, baby. 
I'm not looking. I'm getting excited. We have a flaming filet mignon that I serve tableside. People just love it. The chef's dream, filet mignon. Mm. Something simple, something classic, and something that's not normally served on a trolley. What is that thing? These are roof tile. Raising it from the tile. Yeah, I'm gonna finish it. It's still cooking. You'll love this. Yeah, you'll I love, love this. this. What's that in there? This is butter and garlic. Oh, garlic butter. Uh-huh. That goes on top. And so the tsunami is the garlic butter running down the drain pipe. Right. <laughs> Watch out, and all the stuff can be out the end. <laughs> well, you enjoy that. Thank you very much. Quite welcome. Well, <laughs> me. Mm. That's the toughest and the most chewiest filet mignon I've ever tasted in my entire life. The thing's so chewy. Is it's it chewy? A, yeah, the meat is so tough. Do you uh, want me to? Uh, yeah, no, I, 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 I finished it. Take this out of your yeah, way. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Chef Rams, he hated the food, he hated the decor, and I can't understand why. Less than impressed with lunch. Brian, Brian, good to meet you. Chef Ramsay is anxious to discuss Flamengo's eclectic cuisine with the head chef. And how long have you been here? Um, about a month. What's it like cooking that food? Does it blow you away? Are you excited? No, Are it doesn't you... blow me away. I think it's all over the place. Straight up, would you eat it? No. No, but you have to serve it to me. When a new chef starts in a restaurant, he wants to put his imprint on the menu. Right. But they all want change right now. Who doesn't want change? The owners. Right. Who it's writes the, the menus? We do. Why wouldn't you listen to your chef? I don't know. It's frustrating for me, too, because, like I said, I've made the suggestions. I've said we need you to You sent it to me. You sent every fucking dish to me, and it was embarrassing. Well, no. That's not cooking. That's dog shit. We take pride in what we serve, and he just ripped it apart. It's awful. Coming up. You can make this work if you believe in it. Uh, it's a test of wills. How can you be positive about something you hate? I need to know that you're committed. OK, so stop fucking me. It's the battle of the owner. You don't freaking listen. And the world-class chef. If you're not going to embrace change, shut the shop. Who will stay? How stupid can he be? It's an absolute nightmare, a real nightmare. And who will go? I need to get out of here. I would rather close the doors. And later, a shocking event that will bring Gordon and Adele together. Sometimes it's hard to say goodbye to the past. But it might be the end of Flamangos. Oh, my God! Chef Ramsay is already aware that the food is horrible and the chef is really an unhappy cook. But before Gordon can even contemplate making changes, he needs to get the complete story by observing a dinner service. What name? Her. All right, you can follow me. When the dinner starts coming in, just start throwing some asparagus on, put it on the side. The menu's large. The menu's a little all over the joint. It is. You know, really big. I don't have time to read all this. It's got a lot of things on it. Tonight's dinner service is busier than usual because Chef Ramsay is in town. You ready to order? And his customers order from this massive menu. I'll have the crispy rainforest tilapia. Okay. Tickets are flying into the kitchen. Here we go. Calamari marinara. But the challenge to perfect such a huge variety of dishes is overwhelming for Chef Brian. I, I don't even know what to do. Absolute crazy, you know that? Yeah, huh? yeah. Got way too many tickets up there. Can't have 400 things on your menu. You just can't do it. I don't care who you are. Doesn't matter. We're absolutely buried over here. Buried. We don't even have these set up yet. Unbelievable. Although Chef Brian is slammed in the kitchen. It's like, a, it's like a circus over here. The customers are not exactly sympathetic. Nice What's going on back there? We've been here since 6 o'clock. Well, I can't do it. They're all waiting the well, you same might want to amount. Say something, you know? Like we know. Shut your mouth.
Both are ready. Absolute crazy. Adele's attitude is completely toxic, and it trickles down from us to the patrons. It's 45 minutes into dinner service, and Brian has finally completed the first orders. I need his food out of the window right now. However, just as fast as dishes are rushed to the dining room, really small, and the risotto is very bland. They are quickly returned to the kitchen. Hey, guys, the shrimps are just way too small. And she said the red rice, the risotto, is just bland. Oh, my god. I've had it today already. I've had it. Why am I here? That's it. I'm taking a break. Fuck this. Right, two seconds. Bottom line, I mean, it was just about overwhelming. Disaster. Disaster? Major. It's the menu I was thrown into, and it's a disastrous menu. How can you get passionate about cooking something you hate? It's all over the place. It's uncookable. Right. I need to know that you're committed. I'm committed. committed to change. Yes. Because they have no clue. This restaurant turnaround cannot depend on them. It depends on you sticking with me. Is right. that clear? Absolutely. OK, thank you. Yep. Now that Chef Ramsay understands Brian's issues, they head back to the kitchen. Here I go. Meanwhile, Bill is ready to serve the tableside tsunami. I get tired real quick, but to help the business, I'll do whatever I have to do. Is that well done? No, it's me and Rare. If you just cut that a little bit, you'll see it's me and Rare. All you have to do is cut it. It's cut. No, but I mean cut it this way, because it was sitting on a hot tile. It's not medium rare. OK. I'm sorry. Oh, jeez. You've got a 70 year old he man going round and round the dining room. Yeah, no, he shouldn't be doing this at this pace. Yeah. Well, they're too, so... cheap, they're too cheap to hire anybody else. What are you trying to do? Put the father in the grave? I mean, that's he's got one foot in there already. He didn't even want to do this. He didn't want, he wanted he to retire. Me that. That's what hurts. Yeah. Bill is overworked. I mean, it's not fair. After a night where he witnessed a dejected chef, unhappy patrons, and an overworked older owner, Gordon knows he has to have a serious talk with the tough mother-daughter team of Adele and Cheryl. I wanted to talk to you both personally and express my concerns about Bill. I'm seriously worried about him in a big way. Running around at the age of 70, pushing the cart. Why are you guys letting him do this? Well, he really doesn't work that much. You know what? It's always poor Bill. That's Bill's nickname. Poor Bill. Why have you asked me to come here? Because I feel like I'm wasting my time. Because we don't know what the problem is. The service downstairs tonight, how was that? The kitchen, the kitchen was a, a disaster. Yeah. So you've employed the chef? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he hasn't been given chance to cook. He's cooking your menu. Right. Well, I, we never changed the menu since we opened. He never gets chance to show you what he can cook. Because we felt that our food was very good. Right. Are you stupid? I guess I am. You're accepting that it's perfect. I'm trying to tell you bluntly that it's not. Yet you never seem to accept your own mistakes. It's never your doing. We thought our food was good, but now you just, you know, said it's horrible. You cannot see a problem in your own establishment. No. I'm being honest. What I would like to see it's just a little bit more integrity with owning up to the responsibility to why this place is not working. There's no acceptance on your own mistakes. Good night. Chef Ramsay realizes that the only way to begin to fix some of these problems is to do something these owners have never done, have a staff meeting. It's so important to clear the air. If anyone has anything to say, please talk about it. I'll listen to anything. Doesn't mean I'm going to agree to it. The menu needs to be simplified. Are you kidding? Cut it way back. People want to come in here and cut off shorts and have a beer and a burger. Yeah, but you just started. I don't even know how you cook thoroughly yet. You've got to have the confidence and allow this man to step up to the mark. You need to be a little bit more entrusting on that and less nervous about letting go. I can't do my job if they don't let me do my job. OK, next question. 
I can't understand why the F you don't like me. Well, Isabel, you're an excellent server, but you don't freaking listen. But I know what I'm doing. I don't need to be constantly told the same thing over and over again. Isabel, please be quiet. Why would you think you have to tell me when I've been here for two years? You I know what the F I'm doing. Isabel, you don't know when to shut up. They don't want to hear opinions. We're still going to get treated like garbage. I don't think they're going to change. Coming up, a firestorm no one saw coming. Oh, my God. Will it destroy flamingos and tear this family apart? <laughs> Horrible. That's coming up on Kitchen Nightmares. No! Centrally located next to the train station, Flamangos has managed to push away its local customers. Today, Chef Ramsay begins his plan to bring them back. We're going to start making some changes. Yeah? I am afraid to make the change. Change number one. Let this man cook something that he wants to put on as a special tonight without any interruptions from you two. Second change. Bill, what is your favorite dish to cook? My meatloaf. When was the last time you cooked it? Eight years ago. Tonight, you're going to cook that as well. Really? Change yes. I don't want you around there pushing the trolley out, running around like a blue ass <laughs> life. Both items will go on tonight as specials. My meatloaf that I've been making for years that I haven't made in a long time, it's going to be great to have it on the menu tonight. Your meatloaf. What are you seasoning it with? Fresh parsley and a little salt and pepper. I enjoy cooking a lot better than pushing the trolley around. <laughs> Brian, what are you doing? Chicken and shrimp jubilee, rosemary, gorgonzola, brown sauce. Chef Ramsay definitely let me have free reign on creating my own special, and I wanted to prove it to Bill and Adele that I can do it. I can handle the job. Brian, very nice. Dig in. That is so good. Mm -hmm. Thumbs up? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes? Everybody happy? Yes. yes. I liked it, but I would never order meatloaf out. Never. I can't believe that Chef Ramsay wants meatloaf. Tonight, we can't have a disaster. So let's get set up, let's get prepped. We're opening up. Let's go, guys, yes? As Chef Brian and his team prepare specials for tonight's dinner service, no detail goes unnoticed by Chef Ramsay out in the dining room. What? Those nails, what's going on there? What happened? Aren't they pretty? Prissy, they're fucking I don't. disgusting. Chef Ramsay asked her about her damn nails. Cheryl is the 80s. Are you high maintenance or what? Huh? Seriously? But I work hard. Yeah, unfortunately, the wrong places. Hello. Hi. Follow me. All of our specials tonight are excellent. I'll have the okay, chicken jubilee. I'd like the meatloaf, please. Excellent choice. I think there's hope adding the specials, but will people like it? I don't really know. Right, I want to see you step up to the mark tonight, OK? So get on top of it from the outs. Yes, sir. Ordering three Jubilee meatloaf chicken special. I'm on. Really big night tonight. More importantly, these specials have to work, but Brian has to come out of the kitchen and run it like a head chef because, unfortunately, the owners have employed him as a line cook. Tonight has to be his night. Three Jubilees picking up, one meatloaf. Many of the diners have ordered the specials. Chicken special. And that has had a positive impact on the kitchen. You're doing OK. You're doing beautiful. Brian is not spread too thin and is able to push out the food much more efficiently than last night. Go with this, please, please. And in the dining room... How is everything fabulous? Meatloaf and Chicken Jubilee specials are creating a buzz. Meatloaf uh, out of this yeah. world. While the original menu is creating a slightly different kind of buzz. It's overcooked. It's overdone. I'll bring the owner over, OK, to talk to you. Adele? Yeah? Table 31, the mahi is overdone. They want to speak with you. I'm a little busy, OK? I know you're busy. I'm letting you know that they're waiting. Tell them I will be out as in a I minute. did. That's what I did. OK, so stop fucking me. I'm pretty fed up. I'm treated like almost stupid. Adele can be downright nasty and insulting. OK, complaints. What are they? Okay. Mahi? It's dry. It's dry. It's dry. So you don't want it. Okay. Bastard. I 
I know when the customers come in, you have to, to be positive, but they're liars. God help us. I bet you see more shit in here than a muck spreader has in New Jersey for the last hundred years. See you later, my friend. He's killing me right here. I'm dying with the fuck site. A lot of special left in the kitchen. Which helped a lot. But I was still discouraged with the old menu. It just got a little backed up. Oh, we missed the chicken penne. Get that going on the fly. I need a chicken breast working on the grill. The biggest panic in that kitchen there is trying to get your head around doing this menu. There's so many components in that menu that you're right. reaching for this or reaching for that, that everything's right. just so sporadic. Nothing's right. streamlined. And that's why it's an absolute nightmare. I mean, a real nightmare. Bye. Thank you. Here's the good news. Chicken special, meatloaf, we're big hit. Now, the changes may have been subtle, but it wasn't enough. Nowhere near enough. In order for this to work, whether Adele or Cheryl likes it, this place needs to take a dramatic turn. In fact, the biggest turn has ever had since this place has opened. It's time to say goodbye to the tropics in the center of New Jersey. Everybody, stand up, grab a chair from the dining room, and follow me. Let's go. I was just wondering what's going on. Grab a chair, take two. Let's go. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. What's going to happen? Oh, hold on. No! What do you mean, no? That's I, Willie, my alligator. Trust me, I need him in the truck. I can't believe Chef Ramsay grabbed my alligator and just threw it in the truck. Just threw it in there. Oh, hey, easy with my hey. chair. Hey, we need the menus. Ah. Ah. I don't think it's funny. Watch if you want to keep your job. <laughs> right. Well, I want that alligator. They are not getting that. Cheryl and Adele are in complete denial about this place. Nobody wants this tacky tropical decor. They better not throw that stuff out. Or there's going to be a problem. Oh my god! What is going on? I want my alligator. Come over. I had a very good feeling that this is the beginning of the end of flamingos. Adele. The only way I know when I leave White House Station that the tropics aren't going to creep back in is to burn them. <laughs> gone to the menus, gone to the bamboo, gone to the crocodile, gone to the pineapples. The tropics are going. My greatest fear is to lose everything we worked for. Three, two, one. I know when I leave White House Station that the tropics aren't going to creep back in <laughs> is to burn them. <laughs> the tropics are going. Three, two, one. Hold on, wait. Sorry, I forgot the most important thing. The sign. <laughs> Say goodbye to flamingos. I just can't tell you how happy I am to see that flamingo sign gone. Ready? I'm going to leave you to the expert. Thank you so much. Please do it quickly before they change their mind. Ah, look at that! Anyone for cooked alligators? That's a good one. It feels great to watch flamingos go up in fire. Adele may be upset that she's losing the traffic, but it wasn't working. It's hot as Florida here. <laughs> that is amazing. Wow. Is that right? I don't want you to be upset. Please. She is. Huh? You're going to make me cry. I am devastated right now. Change is difficult. It is. And sometimes it's hard to say goodbye to the past. You know that? It'll be all right, honey. It'll be fine. Yeah. It's just the tropics. The good. four walls are fine. We have faith in you. The past is gone. It will be for the better. But Adele needs to come around.
Now, I have regrets. I don't know what's to come, so we'll see. It's all right, baby. After getting rid of the tropics, Gordon now moves ahead with his plan to transform flamingos. Good morning. Oh, good morning. Morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are we? Okay, nervous. I told him the change would not be subtle, and it's important you embrace change. That's not easy, but it's for the best. Ready? Ready. Yes. Yes. Goodbye, Florida. No more mangoes. Welcome oh. to the junction. <laughs> appropriate is that? Yes, railroad tracks. Junction means trains, but junction also means coming together, which is what this community is going to do on a daily basis. They are going to come together at the junction. Oh, I love it. Adele, how does it sound? Interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Takes me a while. Takes you a while. Yes. I'm not happy about the name. Come in. Welcome to the junction. Oh, oh wow. God! <laughs> Look at the size of this place. <laughs> to open up this room was absolutely crucial. It looks twice the size. Oh, my God! The wow factor was everything. I can't believe the wall is gone. The tropics have gone. This restaurant was claustrophobic. It's much more open. Sandy down and distress the tables to match the chairs. The pineapples have gone. And more importantly, it's just lighting the whole place up. Look at the raw bar! There is no longer a raw bar. This is milkshake heaven. It's perfect. It's a lot more casual now. I'm very excited about the junction. Adele, what do you think? I don't like it. I don't like it. I hate blue. Unbelievable. I'm dumbfounded. I don't think I have ever heard anyone say they hate the color blue. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. How can you be positive about something you hate? Ugly. Don't want to throw up. I hate it. Hate, hate, hate. Oh, my God. The changes to what was once called flamangos has been dramatic. It's terrible. And Adele is finding it hard to accept any of them. I loved what we had, that's all. And uh, this is a very drastic change. And I really don't like it. Think about your customers, because this is not for you to sit and enjoy. This is for you to run as a business. I regret it right now, but I want to see the menu, you know, and see how it's all going to come together. Adele. Thank wow. you. Now, this is trying to keep it in keeping with what's happening in the community. It's diverse, it's sophisticated, and more important, it's modern. How does that read for you? I mean, it, it's simple. There's a little bit of everything for everyone. Yeah. Burgers, meatloaf, we do a chicken. It's comfort food, but it's fancy comfort food. There's no other place around here like this. What do you think of the menu? I mean, this is very limited. Very limited menu. This menu is so limited, it's not going to be successful, and people are not going to come in with that small, small menu. I'm trying so hard to help here. Yeah. There's one thing I need to say to you, is that you cannot be personal about nostalgia that hasn't worked. And you have to embrace change. Because if you're not going to embrace change, do yourself a favor, shut the shop and retire. She has to get used to it, because this is what's going to bring people into this restaurant. And Adele sitting, looking like she wants to throw herself in front of a train. After Chef Ryan spent the day learning the Junction's concise menu... That looks marvelous. Chef Ramsay introduces the staff to the new dishes. If you just have a look at the portion size, it's in keeping with the plate. This is a hallmark. Not just a burger. Three different mini buffalo, meatloaf, and a turkey burger. The bigger portions, glazed salmon, a simple, delicious roast chicken. Who'd like a taste? Dig in. <laughs> dig in, dig in, dig in. Tell me someone moist. That's different. That's good. These salmon are so juicy. Oh, I hate salmon. I love salmon. Oh. Tastes like a fish. Adele, how's the salmon, darling? Oh. 
from the new menu is exactly what we needed. It's nice and simple, but Adele has a very hard time accepting change. This was their last chance to pull this place out. Just go with it. No. It's 30 minutes before the doors open to this new restaurant. You got your salad bowls? Yeah, I'm ready. Beautiful. And everyone is excited about the menu and decor. Everyone except Adele, who has hidden herself in the kitchen on the dessert station. What are you looking for? Crumb, apple crumb, but it's out. Joe, can you do desserts? Yes, sir. Here, give me, I'll take that. He's fine. He can do a dessert. All right. I need your smile. I'll be right out. I'm very nervous. It shouldn't be to my liking. It's to what the customers will want. I don't know if they're going to like this. Good. First customer's there. I really want to go home. Did you just say you want to go home? Yes, I did. Right now, I don't feel my mother feels she has hope. The register has to start ringing for her to feel more confident, because I know she's mortified. As the restaurant starts to fill up with customers, Chef Ramsay inspires the kitchen staff for the big night. Right, Brian, you ready? Yes, sir. When I get an owner like that out there that tells me she wants to go home, tonight, I need you to get even more in control to make this fucking thing work, yeah? Let's do it, yeah. I feel great about the new menu. This is a new beginning. Let's take it from there. The sky's the limit. All right, let's do this. This looks like a place to be fun to come to every day. Really? Thank you. It's open. It's um, inviting, right? You should hear what those people I know. Say. They love it. They love it. And it's, this is more inviting to go to than it was before. Well, screw them. Well, not screw them. They're the ones with the money. I'm going to have the chicken jubilee. I'm going to have the glazed salmon. Ribs, okay. Chicken Jubilee, lemon chicken. With the first orders in, the pressure shifts to Chef Brian, who must execute the Junction's new menu. We're gonna do a salmon and a Jubilee next, so let's finish those. Put the whole pan in the oven. Don't even sizzle the plate. Beautiful. 20's in the window. Cheers. All done. Thanks to Chef Ramsay's more focused menu, Brian is able to get orders out in a timely manner. Table 30 in the window. And more importantly, this is money. the customers are loving the food. It's really good. Who would have thought? You got fried dill pickle. It's not flavor. It's very moist. It's, it's very tasty. I like this. And it's, it's nice and bright. It's too bright. I don't like it. Oh. Now, where's the old pack? I mean, where's mom? <laughs> what? I just don't have the patience anymore for anything. Nice to see you. Where is Madam Grumpy? Where is she? Oh, here we are. He says it's going to work. How stupid can he be? Uh, can I have a quick word with you? Two seconds. Wait. What's the matter? I'm very upset. I don't like this setup. The decor. You can make this work, only if you believe in it. Already, you don't believe in it. The negativity is going to rub off on your staff. Mm. It's going to rub off on your daughter. And the customers will be feeding you. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. I need to get out of here. I have to be proud of what I'm doing. I am not proud of this. I would never run a restaurant like this. I want to go home. Hey. I would rather close the doors. It's opening night at the junction, and even though the customers are happy, Very well seasoned. Adele is miserable and ready to leave. I want to go home. Chef Ramsay is frustrated, and he knows the only way to get through to Adele is through her husband, Bill. Why is Adele so against it? Help me, please. She's that way. But she's our first point of contact. Yeah. If you could do me a favor and just ask her to put a smile yeah, on that on face. face. OK, I, I will do that. Adele can't hide her emotions. If she's mad, you're going to tell. And it's a struggle to get her to go in your direction. But I'm going to give her what I got. How you doing, OK? I'm scared. I'm so nervous. Don't be scared. Just keep smiling. Smile. Smile. There you go. My mother is a, a hard shell to crack. My father is great. He's talking to her, trying to make her feel better. Wonderful yeah. job. It's delicious. Thank you. Good. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Uh, 
You like Very Bill's nice. meatloaf? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Good. I wanted to tell you how beautiful the chair is. You like it. I do. She is lighting up. Is she lighting up? <laughs> yes. I don't think I've gone that long. It's got to happen before I'm 17. <laughs> I told you, she's a pain in the ass. <laughs> Yeah, but you didn't tell me on what scale of a pain in the ass she is. Oh, she's 11. 11. Excellent. This is great. Oh, this good. Is wonderful. Thank you. It was a success. People love the food, and I feel that there's hope. Everybody's happy. It's very good. Good. I'm really glad enjoyed. you enjoyed. In spite of the dramatic changes, the staff rose to the occasion. Done. Done. And customers left happy. And now, even Adele appears to be coming around. First of all, I want to thank everybody for all their hard work, yeah? And a big thank you to the Queen. <laughs> I'm serious. Why? There were a lot of changes. Yes, it was scary, but she pulled it off. It's very hard to put the past behind me. I think the restaurant could be successful, but I don't know, only time will tell. When I first arrived, you'd lost touch with your customers in the community. Tonight, you reconnected in a big way. Tonight, the junction, even though the history is very short, it's only three hours old, is a success. But it's only the foundation, OK? You need to build on it together. Chef Ramsay definitely is giving us a second chance. And I'm just very anxious to be successful. And I see the light at the end of the tunnel. I will be back, and I'll take great pleasure in witnessing the success. And by the time I get back, madam, I want you moved out of that house. <laughs> yes? Promise me? I promise. OK, good. Well done. Seriously well done. Yes? What I've learned from Chef Ramsay is change is good, and I'm up for it. Thank Take you. Take care. I can't wait to see you. you. And maybe I'll get some of the money back that I put into this place. Oh, then I could retire. Right, good night. Good night. Yes? Good night. Big kiss. God, it's so nice to see you smiling like that. You know that. Well, I'm glad you enjoy New Jersey, at least this part of it. I'm thinking of moving here. Oh, my God. God help you. <laughs> what a week. We made some dramatic changes here. We changed the menu. We changed the decor. We even changed the name. That, honestly, was the easy part. The hardest part was changing Adele. She has to look forward, otherwise the history of the junction will be a short one. God, I'm a long way from home. Where is my train? Come on. In the days that followed, Adele slipped back to her old, stubborn self and started to redecorate the junction. The new concise menu, however, remains in place and is a hit in White House Station. We're doing meatloaf. I like that. Tonight, on Kitchen Nightmares, Chef Ramsay heads to California's Sushi Co, where the fish isn't the only thing. This is a Japanese health hazard. It doesn't smell right. You could kill somebody. <laughs> Owner Akira is a broken man. Talk to me. A mere shadow of the star chef he once was. Basically, I don't know what to do. And that's not all. This once proud father, has your father given up? Is dragging his family down with him. My family is hanging by a thread. His two grown children long to see their father happy again. I can't remember the last time I saw him actually happy. While his suffering wife, Lisa, do you think you work really hard all the time? Gets more resentful every day. He doesn't know how to get off of his little skinny ass and it works. Her constant criticism, Ugh, that's a nightmare. Majors push Akira, he can't believe it. And Chef Ramsay, I need you to shut up. Over the edge, I'm not fucking around. In one of the most emotional kitchen nightmares ever. I don't think I ever tell you how much I love you. That's just hard. I just want to oh. see you happy. Chef Ramsay pulls out all the stops. You've forgotten how talented you are. To not only save the restaurant, we need to bring him back, but the family as well. My family is really suffering. Thousand Oaks, California, an affluent suburb outside of Los Angeles. 
Akira and Lisa were a young married couple when they moved here more than 20 years ago from the Bay Area. While Lisa raised their young family, Akira worked at a popular and trendy Japanese restaurant called Sushiko in the wealthy suburb of Bel Air. In the beginning, I was a sushi chef. Akira learned the art of sushi making in Japan. He was good at his skill, and so we started working at Sushiko in Bel Air, and the restaurant just took off and just became super successful. Kanpai! My dad was a great chef. He was so excited when he was cooking. Every year, we increase the sales. Then I become a manager, then owner. Yeah, yeah, this is Akira from Sushiko. We decided it was time to venture into our own bigger and better and nicer Sushiko. Hello, welcome to Sushiko. We decided to open our restaurant in this beautiful shopping center in Thousand Oaks in the beginning. Business was booming, then it just slowed down. Like somebody put the brakes on. It's pretty devastating to him. It broke him. <laughs> it's tough. Yeah. Anybody walking around out there? No, I'm pretty quiet. Even if there's nobody in here, Akira will scramble to find somebody to do a job for him. Hana, could you get the drink order from table one? Your food is up. And that irritates the crap out of me. Make sure you guys have everything, OK? Most of the time now, my dad just kind of walks around. He doesn't like do anything. If you're gonna turn off the electric, you have to pay that one. We are losing like fifteen to twenty thousand dollars a month. Credit card debt is hundreds of thousands, or as deep as you could ever imagine. We still are like nine thousand behind. Living with financial stress is pretty bad. Did you send somebody for two or three? I gave it to them. My parents are always like fighting and arguing, and that's a fucking nightmare. <sighs> Never used to be like that. Over the past four years, Akira and I have grown apart. We work together and we live together, but we don't speak to each other. It just isn't worth it. My dad doesn't spend enough time with us. He's just less approachable. Dad! How many order? Just one? I don't really ever talk to him anymore. And Dad! Akira's spirits are broken down, and he just doesn't know what to do anymore. Life has been like hell since we opened the restaurant. If Sushi Ho closed tomorrow, I think we could lose everything. Our house, restaurant, and our hope and our dreams. I can't remember the last time I slept through a night. She's always worried about what's going to happen next. The chef are losing our last hope. Hello. How are you? I'm Lisa. Lisa, nice to see my darling. Yes. And Akira. Akira. What's the connection? Business partners? 27 this is my, years. My library wife. Are you married to each other? <laughs> yes. And you're the chef. Well, I was. I'm a manager now. I do not cook much anymore. Okay. And Lisa, you run the... I'm kind of the front of the house lady. Greet the guests. Right. Serve tables if needed. What is the problem with Sushi Code? We do not have enough guests. Clearly there's no guests, but what's the problem? The main problem? Which I do not know. You know, we stand in the window and dance trying to get people to come in. You, hey, lift, you lift, up the, lift up the blinds? Does that... <laughs> and that, that hasn't worked around here? It doesn't work. I'm so embarrassed I can't believe she does it in front of Chef Ramsey. So, tell me about uh, Sushiko. I had a restaurant in Bel Air. So then you bought out the other partners and bought the name? Pretty much so, yes. And then decided to sort of move Sushiko from Bel Air to your hometown here in yes, Thousand Oaks. Exactly. exactly. So how long did it open here? It's almost four years. Four years. Um, I can't do anything unless I find out what the problems are. So um, I'd like to eat. Uh, what would you recommend? Um, if you want to try something fusion, I have a sushi pizza. Which a what? Is sushi pizza. Japanese pizza. I don't, I don't like it. Wow. I'm not a big fan of any of our food. There's just, like, no flavor anymore because the cure is not involved enough in the kitchen. OK. Well, I'm going to sit down and have lunch. I'll look forward to catching up with both of you after lunch. Thank you. I enjoy. Lovely. Thank you. Come on in. Some strange fixes on the wall. Are you ready? Yes, please. Okay. Thank you. Uh, right. Let's start with a little bowl of miso. OK. And um, Akira mentioned the sushi pizza. He recommended that? Yeah. I wouldn't recommend it. No. No. 
I would not recommend the sushi pizza to anybody. Uh, I think it's vile. Got to try the sushi pizza, just out of curiosity. Good luck. Good luck. Um, the Green Tower, that sounds nice. And then let's end up with a little bit of the salmon, sashimi. I think that'll be enough. You got some of the best mm -hmm. and some of the worst. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Excellent. Some of the best and some of the worst. No one's afraid to share their opinion here. Here you are, for your soup. Thank you. Here we go. Miso soup doesn't taste very fresh. It's not actually very hot either. Oh, he's talking now. Somebody should go listen to what he's talking about. Thank you. Chef, your green tower. Thank you. That's very salty, that, does that? It is. Yeah. Is that normal? Yeah, that's yeah. normal. Thank you. Thank you. What is that? Some is gray hair. Um, Are you finished with the green tower? And it's just, I pulled out this disgusting hair. Yeah. Yeah, I've definitely finished with that. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I just wanted to just die, bury my head in the sand when that happened. Um, guys, there's a hair in the green tower. You gotta be kidding me. It's always like a running joke, like, oh my god, there's a lot of things going wrong. So Akira disappears. Do sashimi. Thank you. You're welcome. No, be... And is the salmon fresh? Yes, it is. Thank you. The salmon is fresh, right? Frozen. Frozen. Mm. It just tastes like it's frozen. How was your sashimi? That's definitely frozen. It's very, very chewy. My mistake, I was just informed. They are frozen. They tasted frozen. Is that normally the way they freeze all the fish? Uh, I guess we get lazy with our food. Sushi pizza. Yeah. I've never been to a Japanese restaurant where I can have a pizza sushi style and a chef owner that's no longer in the kitchen. I'm nervous. Let's go with it. OK. Um, that's the sushi pizza. It sure is. It's rice, salmon, crab, and mayonnaise. Some cheese. Wow. Thank you, then. Japanese pizza. That is rancid. You were right. That is an insult to pizza yeah, <laughs> and Japanese food. The chef had fair warning that it was going to be terrible. Mm. I told him not to get it. Where's the chef? The old sushi ko always stood for the finest in Japanese food. But today's disappointing lunch proved to Gordon that the only thing this sushi ko has in common with the former one is the name. Did you know there's a hair in the crab? No. No. No one told you? Hair? Are they wearing hats back here? You asking me? Yeah. I'm... <laughs> Are you guys wearing hats for service? Uh, no. Nothing at all? No. If you're telling them what to do, why can't they wear a hat? I don't so... know. Oh, I Jesus. Let, let, let's go back to the beginning. When was the miso soup made? It was made yesterday. Yesterday. And just tell me, why would something like that taste salty? It's probably been sitting in there reducing overnight. Probably... What do you mean reducing overnight? You keep stuff in the bamboo overnight? Correct. What? The sushi pizza was a fucking joke. Right. OK. Hideous, disgusting, and an insult to Japanese culture, and an insult to a fucking pizza house. You don't need me to come in here and tell you you look fucking stupid selling a sushi pizza that tastes like gunk. What were you doing serving frozen fish to me lunchtime? I would like to order proper fresh fish, and it doesn't actually happen. I've never known a Japanese restaurant to freeze so much stuff. I'm not here to make you look stupid, but I can smell bullshit. OK. Can you say something? Seriously. Talk to me. Talk to me. What do you want me to say? Come.
coming up. This is a Japanese health hazard. A shocking inspection. You could kill somebody. Has Gordon wondering if Akira and Sushiko can be saved? Has your father given up? Then... My family is hanging by a thread. It's a Kitchen Nightmares intervention. We need to bring him back. As Chef Ramsay works with Lisa... I want to be more emotionally supportive. Sammy... I want to do as much as I can. That's just hard. And Hana... I don't think I ever tell you how much I love you. ...to get Akira back on track. My family is really suffering. You don't want to miss what's coming up on Kitchen Nightmares. <laughs> Getting very little out of Akira, Chef Ramsay decides to sit down with the owner's children, 22-year-old Sammy and 20-year-old Hana. Was it always a plan to have both of you so involved from day one? It was an idea for us to come help and when, give them a break if they needed to, but not to be here every weekend. I, most of the time, don't even want to be here because I'm here so much, but got to do what you got to do. Yeah. I'm going to help out the family. So. Um, Here's my worry, honestly. It's the level of shortcuts that are currently going on in this restaurant. Right. Has your father given up? Yeah, I think he definitely has on the inside, but he doesn't want to show it. Do you ever tell him to just stop, take stock, rethink? He doesn't really listen. Please don't get upset. I'm sorry. No, no, come on. I just, uh, you know, I know, I know. I, 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 it's hard for me to I know, it's telling I, I totally get it. I'm almost 21, should be living my own life, but I can't because I have to help out with my family and I can't leave them. You're both incredibly committed and I you know, totally respect that level of loyalty. Uh, what I'm more nervous about than anything is the state of the business. Where do you see the business? Pretty much as far down as you can go. I've also recently, like in the past year, given money also. And is it? Mum that comes and asks? Who, who? It was my dad that asked. So initially I gave $10,000, and then half a year ago he asked for $5,000. And I was like, of course, you know. How? Um, from working my photography, my own personal income. If your family's asking me for help, I would help them right away. I have probably given my parents above $20,000. Decent chunk of change for a 22-year-old, I think. There's a level of unfairness because you've both been dragged into this through no choice of your own. You've got my help. I'm supporting every one of you. My family is hanging by a thread. There's only so much I can do. In the short time that Gordon has been at Sushi Co, he has not only learned that the restaurant is in shambles, but that this once tight-knit family is suffering badly. Hi, welcome to Sushi Go. I'll take you back to your table. Enjoy your dinner, here. What can I get for you? Spicy tuna, rice bread, I'm going to do some sushi. OK. Bust it out, man. Why all these things got burns on them? You, you, you don't buy them by that, do you? Why are they burnt? We reuse them sometimes. You what? We wash them, clean them, and then use them again. I can't believe this is happening. I wash the stick and everything is clean. What's the program? Where's Lisa? I, uh, no, Kira, don't run away like a snake. OK. I've just scraped dried chicken off these. We're cutting oh. across. There's bits of food on there. Do, do you think this is right? Um... Just feel how sticky that is on the end. That's food being wiped off there. It's 45 minutes into service, and Sushiko is doing what, unfortunately, it does best, disappointing its customers. Is it fried? It's a little scary, though. Okay, guys, if you don't like the tempura, I said it's way overcooked, and the bat is just really doughy. Thank you. Lisa. It's coming back. It's doughy and that's not tempura broccoli. It's mushy, yeah. It's good. Stop the broccoli. Take it off. Yeah, don't even it. like do tempura yeah. anymore. Why cause more damage? 
Is that fryer hot enough? Does it work properly, uh, the fryer? Temperature? I, actually, that's a great question. It doesn't look like it's hot enough. It's not blasting it. No. Uh, that's scary. That's a nightmare piece of equipment that probably isn't holding the temperature because it's getting old. Just like me. <laughs> uh, Lisa, here, look at all this. Oh, the spicy mayo? So you don't keep mayonnaise in the fridge? Well, no. That's not required for refrigeration. That's I had. Refrigerate yeah. after opening. Feel how warm that is. Maybe, yeah. And how long has that been staying outside for? It, Truthfully. Always staying outside, spicy for, mayonnaise. For four years? Yes. This is a Japanese health hazard. This is about you running your restaurant properly. And you're not. Oh, my God. What's this fridge for? It's warm in here. And this fridge is on 50. Does this work in this fridge? Well, it broke down. When did it break down? A couple of months ago. I don't have the money to fix, so... So we've, we've got big containers of ice. Yes. To keep the ingredients cold. Well, just the vegetable we keep it here. Vegetable? We've got dairy, you've got oh, eggs here. That, that's a mistake. Never chicken beef here? Look at me. Well, sometimes they make a mistake, Why but we'll put it back. I'm not lying to you. Akira, you could kill somebody. Bad food, a family in ruins, and unsanitary conditions. You could kill somebody. It's been quite a first day. And as dinner service ends, Thank you. Chef Ramsay realizes that Sushiko is in much worse shape than he thought. Right. How is that for you? I think our kitchen could have run a little smoother. I don't think you're taking it seriously enough. The rice, the soup, the fridge, the broccoli. Talk to me. I think that Akita, you know, could do a lot more. There's so many bad practices, and you don't seem to give a fuck. Have you given up? I think he's given up. How many of your customers would order Kushiaki, if they knew they were eating it or feeling it off a wooden stick that had been used three weeks ago? None of them. It's almost like you're a man in denial. Anything to say or...? No, I should... He doesn't know how to fix it, though. He opened this place on the assumption that he was the delegator. He's lost. I think that the restaurants burnt him out. He thought that we were going to be living La Vida Loca, and when the business didn't go the way it was supposed to, he didn't know what to do. Obviously. But you don't really think that you're lazy, right? You think you work, do you think you work really hard all the time? I said, I think you should go cook. You go to Wood Cook anymore. That's the way Akira feels. If, if I can pay you to do it, why should I do it? But you're not really paying him. Your kids are paying him. He doesn't know how to get off of his little skinny ass and really getting to work. Right. I, want you, I, I need you to shut up for two minutes, and I need you to talk. This is part of the reason why you've lost your voice. Not only is your wife wearing the trousers, but she's speaking for you. What is it? Talk to me. Come on. Talk to me. I just, uh, I don't know. Come on, Akira. Fuck me. Basically, I don't know what to do. I'm angry that Akira's lost his ability to communicate with people. And it was good to get it out. Akira, once a proud chef, has lost his way. And unfortunately, his family is being dragged down with him. Chef Ramsay knows that in order for this restaurant to have any chance of surviving, he must find a way to bring them together. Tough day yesterday, uh, really tough. I'm outside the family home now, and it's clear that Akira is a broken man. And in order to get this restaurant fixed, I need the old Akira bag. So I can't do that without the family's help. I just wanted to talk to all three of you um, about Akira. 
He's a broken man, a man with uh, a tremendous weight on his shoulders. This is a man that is uh, not just on the edge. The whole family's involved in this. You can feel the divide just in terms of the friction that's built between you. Every day, every second. Take me back when you first met. Um, he was really funny and cute. <laughs> he had a lot of energy, and he used to think of goofy things to say, even though he didn't speak English very well. And <laughs> he never smiles anymore, yeah. So sad, yeah, it's so sad. Dad's just kind of away from everybody, I think. He's removed now. He's not like a part of the family, really. It's just always just me and the kids, and he's just gone. He'll just like stand and just stare, because he doesn't know what to do. He's, he's lost. I miss like when he was just smiling when I walked in the door. Yeah. We need to bring him back. If that Russian's got any chance of really seriously turning around, it can't be done without him. Yeah. No, I know that. I agree. You can't do it without him. He's the heartbeat. I need each and every one of you to give him a, a lift in a way that his self-esteem rises, the confidence starts to shine, and more importantly, we start to get him back. I think my dad, he's checked out. I can't remember the last time I saw him, like, actually happy, like, waking up happy, going to bed happy. I wish he could come back and make it all right. Oh, Chef Lamsey. Where have you been on the lake? Oh, well, you know, I was Sit just down. taking a walk. I didn't know you know my house. Yeah, I know. Well, I, I found wanted to, me here. I wanted to come and uh, see where it all started. There's a level of distance that we've grown apart. We need to narrow the gap. Sammy, you go first. What inspires you most about Dad? Working up from dishwasher to restaurant owner. He always, he's always one that tells me to get it right the first time. I learned all my hard work from him, so, yeah. It's just tough, you know, like, yeah. I want to do as much as I can. It's just, it's just hard. I know I'm putting out the weight on you, so I'm going to try harder, OK? I will. You believe him? Thank you, Sammy. <laughs> Honor, if there was one thing that you would want to say that you've never had the chance to do over the last four years, what would it be? I don't think I ever tell you how much I love you. Yeah. Like, I say I love you, but I never really express it. <laughs> I love you too. I just want to see you happy. I love you too. My family is really suffering. I want to try to be more emotionally supportive. We want to support you, yeah. and we want to do everything we can. It would be a dream just to be our old selves again. Let's pretend that we were starting out, and like, mm -hmm. let's try to find each other again and be friends. Mm -hmm. I feel really happy, but a little sad, too, because I put my family in a bad situation here. Today, we are going to start it fresh. We wipe the slate clean. We start the day with a family hug. Group hug. Yes. I feel way stronger. I think, you know, I can do it this time. I can restart again. Coming up, Chef Ramsay puts his plan for Sushiko into effect. And tonight, it's a comeback service. But Lisa is not supportive. I still don't think he's working very hard. It's clear the restaurant is not the only thing that's on the line. Akira-san! So is their marriage. Cut him some slack. The wounds run deep, and no one is backing down. Bang. Not Lisa. I'm not going to take all the blame. And not Akira. I can't believe it. The emotional family meeting really touched Chef Ramsay, and he made arrangements to give Akira and the restaurant some much-needed help. Hello. I decided that this family needs a little lift, a little leg up. I've never been to any Japanese restaurant and seen a fridge with a block of ice in there that broke down four months ago. So I made a few phone calls and managed to get hold of seven brand-new 
counter Trollson refrigeration units. Allison? Top of the line. Yeah, come around, have a look. Trollson? Come around, yeah, that's right. That's the best yeah, one look. you can get. Yeah, uh, trust me, number no one. No way. Come around. No way. Look, come around, Lisa. Open them up. He's smiling. Oh, my God. The fridges, to me, are amazing. They're beautiful. They're great. I can't believe it. But to see Akira's face when he heard out about it was the best, because that's the only time I've seen him smile in four years. I didn't stop there. Come with me. Yes. Have a look at two stunning Vulcan deep fat fryers. Oh, my God. So amazing. Yeah. The most amazing eight ring. Gas burner. Look, we got the best now, stuff. And the most amazing walk-in <laughs> freezer. Temperature is visual. No more ice bucket. When I saw this kitchen, I thought it wasn't my kitchen. It looks like a shoulder. Everything's brand new. It's like a dream. Now we have no excuses. Great. New equipment is just part of Chef Ramsay's plan. He knows there's another critical change that has to be made at Sushiko. It's an asset they should have taken advantage of a long time ago. Tonight, you're going to cook. OK. It's a comeback service. OK. OK. But I want you to grab it okay. and run with it. All right. How are you feeling? Feeling great. Can't wait to cook. Excellent. OK. Good. Akira, today he's going to help oversee tonight's launch of the sushi bar. OK, please. Welcome the man himself back. Good. Look at you! Good. Look at pocket rocket. Look at you! <laughs> Woohoo! Welcome back! Thank you. Yes! I feel good. Oh. See my dad in his chef suit it was really exciting. The sushi bar is where my dad belongs. It's where he started off when he was a great chef before, and he's getting back in it, so that's great. Okay, Lisa, open the door. Hello. Welcome to Sushi Cow. It's me too. For dinner service, not only will they be serving fresh fish, Chef Ramsay prepares with Akira two new salmon dishes that will be featured on tonight's menu. Hello, how are you tonight? Are you folks ready to order? I'll have the chicken curry. We'll try the sushi cooked crunch. OK. So you got sea Atlantic salmon. I'm going to make that, OK, Oyako, OK? I'm so excited about being behind the counter. We have a lot of good fish today, so enjoy, OK? All right. I'm going to have a great time today. Two rainbow, tea and beach, and crunchy freeze. I don't think Akira is taking it seriously. Even though we are starting to see a glimpse of the old Akira shining behind the sushi bar. All right, thanks for waiting. Chef Ramsay notices that his wife, Lisa, is not supporting him. Could you take this out for 205, please? I have some food for you guys right here. It's excellent. Good. I like it. I still don't think he's working very hard. We got two more specials, OK? OK, yeah. So let me know when you're ready. I'm going to pour the oil, OK? OK, thanks for know. double checking on everything. Is he working hard? I don't think so. He's still just walking around. I'm worried that Akira's not going to ever be the chef that he should be. Take this and come back right away. I don't think he'll really follow through with it. All right. There's some share plates and soy dishes. It's supposed to have avocado in it. Okay. And this is supposed to be a Hawaiian roll with the shrimp on top instead, but it's a California roll. That's a nightmare. Akira-san, the eel roll is supposed to have avocado inside, not a Hawaiian sauce. Okay, all right. Really pisses me off. Lisa's really tough with Akira. When she gets going, just get out of the way. It's like a tornado. Ashi. Yeah. Did you take this to 205? That was my mistake. I didn't check. That's for Mala. Thank you. Or two, no, 205 is or, me. Or 203, 203. So, I have to try harder. This is going to be your next order. Spider, tuna capacio, salmon special. Mara, how are you with avocado? Yeah. And shrimp Thank on the you. top. Thank you. And the roll. Yay. Yeah. Thank you. I'm so glad to have Akira back behind the bar. It makes everything go so much smoother. OK, Scott. Done, 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 right. done. This is incredible. With Akira standing behind the bar, dressed as a chef, running his restaurant, already there's a completely different feel to last night's service. Oh, sesame oil. Kind of cooks on that dish. So enjoy, OK? That was really good. Very good. That's definitely the best sushi. 
watching my dad work in the kitchen and smiling almost the whole time. It was just a great feeling. Thank you very much. Thank you. Good night. Everything's getting better. As dinner service comes to an end, it's clear that Sushiko has a long way to go. But the new equipment, Akira's new attitude, and a couple of new dishes have Chef Ramsay feeling better about its chances. First of all, let me be really blunt uh, with you, yeah, and, and something you, 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 you need to hear. OK. Yeah. Honestly? Yes. Tonight, you are a different man. Thank you. The change is night and day. I feel like I woke up. Not only did you look good, but you seemed to look like you were enjoying what you were doing. I've got total respect for you today. Yeah? I appreciate it. Good job. Thanks. Hey. I need a quick chat with your wife. I can't forget anything Chef Lamde taught me. I have a hope, but I know I have to really, really work harder. Now, he may have changed, but unfortunately, you haven't. The difference in that man in 24 hours is night and day. And not once tonight did you mention anything to him. And you can't be that fucking cold. That would be like a block of ice. He's not your head chef. He's your husband. Yeah. And here's the thing. You're tough. You've been through a lot. And over the last four or five years, you've become stronger than he has. Coming from the outside in, it's so evident. You're fucking bang, bang, bang. Back off. I'm not fucking around. I'm not going to take all the blame, but I agree that I am a bitch to Akira, and I'm, I agree that it's not a good way to be. I think, between you and I, that man needs you more than ever before. Oh, totally, yeah. What you need to do is cut him some slack, not just for him, but for the family's sake, before it's too late. After Chef Ramsay's conversation with Lisa, that man needs you more than ever before. And with Akira's commitment to change, I feel like I woke up. Gordon and his team went ahead with a much needed makeover of Sushi Co. Chef Ramsay! Good morning. Look at you two holding hands and cuddling as well. <laughs> Chef Ramsay pleaded with me to embrace Akira and try to give him the support he needs. So, this is a really crucial point in our lives. It's like being reborn again. OK, today we're relaunching the new Sushi Co. So we have to bring Sushi Co into the modern era. And the decor has to stand out as something not just cutting edge, but fresh with a wonderful appeal. Are you ready? Yeah. yeah? My hands go. are sweating. Let's go. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Come in. Look at that. Contemporary. And it's got that really fresh appeal to it. Oh, my god. I'm like shaking. Goodbye, samurai warrior. The minute you step in this door, great colors, it's fresh and Whoa. modern. All that nice. It's stunning. I felt like, you know, what? This is my restaurant? What is this? You know? It's just amazing. Oh, my God! When I first arrived, it was like sitting inside a prison. Now it's beautiful. Look at the color. Dark, moody red. That's my picture. Oh. You have a serious artist in the family, but no one's ever, oh. ever shown him off. They're cool, they're sophisticated. Lisa, are you happy? I'm so happy. It's just amazing. The color is just perfect. Goodbye! It's sexy, come over here. I can't go in the middle. Chef Ramsay is bringing us together as a family. Yes, let's go. My parents are like more happy than I've seen them in forever. It's awesome. He's a new man. After revamping Sushi Co into a stylish contemporary Japanese restaurant, Chef Ramsay moves on to the menu. Welcome to the new food. Whoa. Walk down, have a look. By modernizing the traditional sushi dishes. Albacore tartar with avocado, crispy salmon cake, sea tuna with a salsa, uh, Japanese style curried mussels, teriyaki chicken, the rolls, we've got the fire roll, clean, modern, great execution. OK, so we're going to have a great start today, right? Word of the relaunch has spread through the community, and Chef Ramsay has surprised the owners with traditional taiko drummers to officially kick off the evening.
Thank you. Oh, my God. And ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for coming. Thank you. The official welcoming and the opening of this restaurant. Excellent. My heart was pounding like a, you know, drum. It's so exciting. Brand new restaurant, brand new me. Hello. Welcome to Sushi Co. Can we have the Super Dragon Roll? As the first orders make their way into the kitchen, so you make sure to back him up, okay? An energized Akira pumps up the cooks for the big night. Help each other, talk to each other, okay? Sure. All right. First one of the night. Sushi Co Crunch, last one out. Let us cut two more. Sammy 214, Sushi Co Crunch. Let us wrap that in the window. Okay, give it to me. I need uh, one more Atlantic salmon here. 209, could you drop this off? The yellowtail roll. Akira, at his rightful place in the kitchen, pushes the first orders out. Oh my gosh, that's really good. And customers are satisfied with what the new sushi co has to offer. Beef is very good. But soon after, old habits return, and Akira is doing everything except what he needs to do most: cook. That one you special. Please enjoy. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. I've been waiting for a special for half an hour. Lisa, the food's hanging around too long on the window. OK. Without a leader, the kitchen is falling behind. It's dying in the window. And the impact is starting to be felt in the dining room. 209 only has one ticket here. No. There's another ticket. There's more tickets there. Oh, yeah. Earlier tonight, Akira was doing really well behind the sushi bar. But now he's falling back into his old ways already. He's out bussing tables, and he's not paying attention to what's happening. We need him to be back behind the bar again. What are you doing carrying that thing? Well, they needed the help, so I just... They need the help. All right. Honestly, I'm worried. You went back to your old ways. You didn't cook anything. You bus tables, you serve food, you delegated. Why weren't you cooking? Why weren't you... Can you not do it? No, I can do it. You're not a fucking manager. You're not a busboy. You're the right. chef. Come on. Finally, towards the end of dinner service, Akira took Chef Ramsay's advice. OK. And jumped back into cooking in the kitchen. Do that. Yeah, thank you. But for the most part, it was his staff who pulled together and made tonight's relaunch a success. Thank you. The good news about tonight is the customers love the food. Oh, yeah. Yes? Yeah. Well, this restaurant took a huge leap forward. Oh, yeah. In terms oh, yeah. of spreading the message out there. But I just want to know what you're going to do. What's going to happen when I'm gone? I will remember what every, everything you told me. You are a talented man. You've just forgotten how talented you are. What are you talented for? Picking up fucking plates? No. Nope. Why are you a talented man? Cooking. That's right. So if you're going to dress it the part, look the part, cook your socks off. Got it. I'm not going to go leave the section, not going to pass the table, or not going to do that. If I catch your skinny little ass that side of the table, I swear to God. But Lisa, you've got to support each other. I came in, I first arrived, the, the whole family, not just the restaurant, was just fragmented. Four different individuals seeking different ambitions with different attitudes and no one's singing off the same page. But there's a reconnect that's taken place. There's a level of clarity, proper understanding, and we all know what we've got to do. They'll be OK. You know, we're tight army here now. So we will, Please. Help, we will help each other. Having Chef Ramsay come into our lives is, it's meant the world. Yeah, we have a start over, and I'm nervous as shit that it's not going to go smoothly, and I am just am thankful for this new chance. Take care. Thank you. Yes. Good night. Adios. Thank you Take so care. much. Adios. 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 Hey, Thank you. It's been an absolute pleasure. All right, give me a hug. Yeah. <laughs> I never hug in Japan. He's going to pick you up. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> OK. Bye. It was really cool to see my parents give each other kisses and stuff. I haven't seen that in a while. Poor bug. Working with each other and supporting each other, it's going to give us more hope than we had before.
What a week. We made a lot of changes. We changed the equipment, we changed the menu, and we changed the decor. But what this family failed to realize is that their greatest asset was something I could never have given them, because it was themselves. And it's that that will make this place successful. Whew, what a week. Sayonara, a thousand oaks. In the days that followed, Sushiko saw a boost in business, and Lisa and Akira were working as a team once again. All right. Let's clean up the place. Yeah, let's clean the space up here. Recently, they decided that in order to maximize profits, they would search out a new location where the rents weren't as high. You have anything, anything special, give me a call. Regardless of the location, the most valuable lesson this family may have learned was not how to run their business, but how to appreciate each other.